everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Tiffany Beeson from Beauty and the Beasts. I upload every single Tuesday and annual Thanksgiving favorites cook with me. I do this video every year. It's one of my favorite videos to make and it's a tradition over here on our channel. I do try to add some new things as well. So I do have a couple new recipes coming to you, like a peanut butter pie. That sounds so good. I don't know how I'm gonna wait till tomorrow to eat it. It's early in November, but this video makes sense for me besides the fact that I wanna give you recipes my mom has thanksgiving at her house i'm number five i'm one of seven kids so i understand why she wants to have a thanksgiving at her house because of course i'm always going to want my kids and my grandkids to have a traditional thanksgiving here whether that's on actual thanksgiving or not it's just something about having your home filled with your kids and you know just great memories so her thanksgiving is actually tomorrow which is sunday you're seeing this on tuesday um so none of this food is going to waste. Not that it ever would. Sometimes when I cook too much, my neighbors get to try it all. I sent the kids to visit his parents, so I'm trying to get as much done you know, while they're not here. So let's get right into this video. First, I'm gonna show you what we're making. All right, you know I'm extra, so I printed a menu for us just to show you everything we're making. And when I thought of the menu, I envisioned these beautiful twinkly lights. So here they are. Here's my vision coming to life right now. But we are making gluten-free mac and cheese, cranberry sauce, drumsticks, green bean casserole, maple roasted fall vegetables, sweet potato casserole, um, apple pie, and peanut butter chocolate pie. I turned the lights off in the kitchen so that you could see the twinkly lights for the menu, and I kind of feel like I might like this lighting better, so we'll see. We'll get cooking and see if it gets too dark, we'll change it out. But don't be alarmed when you hear me say gluten-free. Literally all the recipes are the same. You would just use regular pasta, regular flour, so everything stays the same, just we use a gluten-free version of everything, so don't be scared. Before we get any further into this video, I'd like to thank Caraway Home for sponsoring. I'm so excited. I've literally been dreaming about this cookware since I saw it years ago, but I had just gotten new stuff, and so I felt bad getting rid of it, but now my sister is getting her own house, my younger sister, so she gets my old stuff, and I get the Caraway Home, and I'm so excited because I literally wanted this forever. Caraway's internet with kitchenware is a staple for any home. It comes in various modern shades to fit with any design aesthetic. For example, mine is white and gold and matches my kitchen perfectly. But besides that, the storage is absolutely amazing and just makes life so much easier. You know, I love my stuff nice and organized, so this was honestly just made for me and is a huge space saver. Caraway Homes non-toxic kitchenware features chemical-free ceramic coating, so food can be prepared with peace of mind. There's no hard to pronounce chemicals which leach into your healthy ingredients. And right now you can save up to 20% site-wide on Caraway products, including the internet famous non-toxic cookware set and new product releases. This is Caraway's biggest sale of the year and it's an exclusive deal that won't last long. So make sure to shop your favorite colors and products while you still can. The holidays are around the corner, so now is the time to order. Visit carawayhome.com slash beast in November to take advantage of this limited time offer up to 20% off of your next purchase. So click the link in my description box to access this sale. You're gonna see Caraway in action throughout this entire video. I'm using them to cook everything. So stay tuned, you'll get to see it up close and personal and see just how amazing it is. Besides the fact that it's absolutely stunning and matches my kitchen, more importantly, it's non-toxic, it's a space saver, just very Tiffany. It's organized, it's just, it makes me very, very happy. And I seriously feel like Christmas came early for me because I've been wanting this, honestly, for so long. So thank you again, Caraway, for sponsoring today's video. Let's get right into it. So first things first, let's get started on rinsing all of our produce, doing the chopping, the peeling, all of the tedious so that our recipes are just super smooth and easy. Get this stuff out of the way. Also, if you're gonna be baking or using anything that requires room temperature butter, be sure to take that out of the fridge now before you start cooking anything else. Also, when we're washing our fresh cranberries, you want to kind of like feel in here. You can feel right away if one is not good. Like this one right here is a little squishy. We don't want that guy in here. So it just it's really actually easy. You can kind of just see them too. But when you're digging your hands or when you're rinsing, you can definitely feel if any are not good. You definitely want to take those out.
All right, let's get to chopping. One thing I always do is I have like a bin or the trash can here or something so that you don't have to like keep going back and forth to the trash can with your scraps, your peels, or whatever you're not using from your produce. All right, our apples are all peeled. Now we're going to get to chopping and then we're going to peel our sweet potatoes and get those cut up. I'm also just cutting off the tops and the ends of our butternut squash because I'm going to microwave it to make it easier to peel and chop. All right, so we got our sweet potatoes going. We're gonna let that boil and then they'll be ready once you stick a fork through it and your sweet potato falls off. At least that's how I know that they're done and then we'll mash them up. I'm gonna be using a dairy-free butter for that, but you can use whatever regular butter. But I want my brother to be able to eat these and he is dairy-free. There's some stuff I'm making, like a very cheesy mac and cheese. Sorry, Ryan, I love you so much, but sorry. <laughs> anyway. Let's get started on our cranberry sauce. We got no time to waste. So when I'm cooking, if I have a free uh, spot here on the stove or in the oven, I will go ahead and use it up to as much as I possibly can at once, just so that we are effective. So effective, efficient. We're effective and efficient. So anyway, one cup of orange juice into the most beautiful pot I've ever seen in my entire life. And then we're gonna do one cup of sugar. I should've did the sugar first because I can't put this in there, but it's all good. Oh God. Also make sure you pour it all over your counter too, for good measure. All right. One cup of sugar, one cup of orange juice. Another thing that's important to me is cleaning up along the way. I'm not trying to stay up all night cleaning, so Again, when you're cooking, especially for like holidays and stuff like that, no downtime. You're either cleaning, prepping, doing something. Once the sugar is dissolved into your orange juice, you'll be able to feel it because you won't feel like the greediness and you'll be able to see it start to like bubble a little bit. That's when we will go ahead and add our cranberries in. And we also do like lots of cinnamon and everything that I'm gonna have all of the recipes linked down in the description box below as well. See? Effective and efficient. All right, we got some boilage over here. I think it's officially time to turn the lights back on because it's getting too dark. There we go. <laughs> All right, time to add our cranberries. Now I'm gonna add a bunch of cinnamon. I don't really measure it, just kind of wing it, but it's always really good. If you like a more watery cranberry sauce, um, you can use more liquid. We like it more like a jellied type cranberry sauce. So now we're basically just gonna wait. We're gonna start to hear a bunch of little pops and let this boil and cook for about 10 minutes or so. You'll be able to see when it's like to your liking. If you like a more full cranberry sauce, you'll cook it you know, like the berries actually more full, you'll cook it for less. This is also great to make ahead of time because um, it's better once it's cold and in the fridge and it's one of the dishes that stays cold. 
So this is a great make ahead dish. Check on my sweet potatoes, still kind of just chilling. I have a little bit more chopping to do. The Brussels sprouts I originally had looked really bad, so I ordered some new ones when I got my macaroni. It's already been delivered. I don't know what we did without like grocery service before. My mom's like, I used to walk in a blizzard to get groceries. I don't know, I'll use this. Like, I just went on my phone, press the button. We're really blessed with all this technology. Are we? Are we blessed with technology or cursed? So for my Brussels sprouts, I just chopped the bottom off, cut them in half. This is part of our roasted maple fall vegetables. This will be my first time making this. This is new to the channel, but it sounded amazing. Um, when you serve, I'm gonna warm everything up once I get to my mom's. I'm gonna wind up transferring everything over into like the foil pans. Um, but once I get to my mom's, I will warm everything up. So initially I'm gonna roast everything, but once they're cooked in my mom's house, I'm gonna sprinkle some crumpled goat cheese on top. I'll let my brother get his serving first before I put cheese all over it. I was talking to my mother-in-law today at Carter's soccer game, and we're discussing her Thanksgiving and what I'm making, and I told her about this, and she was like, oh, that sounds so good, like telling her all the veggies and stuff that go into it. And she was like, wait, Brussels sprouts? No, I'm out. I feel like a lot of people hate Brussels sprouts. Do you like them? I feel like it, all on how they're prepared. If you just had like a boiled Brussels sprout, you might not love it, but if you have it roasted with bacon or roasted with some type of like maple or some spice, it's very, very good. Trust me. Even when we go out, there's a place that I love. They have like, they're like crispy Brussels sprouts with like a spicy honey sauce and they're amazing. Oh, I hear some cranberries popping. That is not where that goes. Also Brussels sprouts in the air fryer, very good. Cranberry sauce is not only like delicious and makes the whole house smell amazing, but just the colors are like, oh my gosh, I could just stare at it. They're so beautiful. I, I just, I love making homemade cranberry sauce. So you can kind of see some of them are starting to pop a little bit and you can hear them. I don't know if you can hear it in this video, but kind of want to watch it and just stir it here and there. All right, the cranberry sauce is done to my liking. I'm gonna go ahead and transfer that here because this is what I'll then just bring to my mom's house after it's cooled off. We definitely don't wanna put it in the fridge until it's all the way, like room temperature. And you'll see, I'll keep you updated and show you, but um, this will congeal and be a lot less water. I'm also gonna take you to my mom's house just to show you everything that everybody else makes tomorrow as well. All right, so our cranberry sauce is done. I have that cooling. Now I'm getting started on our maple veggies. I'm trying to think of what I can put this in. Good, this looks good. So we have our Brussels sprouts that we chopped up. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw that in here. Now I need to cut up some butternut squash. I might've went overboard with the butternut squash. So you saw I cut the ends off and then I microwaved it for five minutes just to make it a little bit easier to peel and cut. So, I always cook for like an army, that's how I am. I think it's from being from a large family. I literally get so upset there's like not enough food for somebody, so I'm all about leftovers. My sister already texted everybody, said don't forget to bring your Tupperware for leftovers. I've even brought like the to-go containers from like Sam's Club or BJ's, Costco, they all sell them. But I'd rather have leftovers than not enough. All right, I just started preheating the oven. The robot back will get it. Okay. Brussels are in here. Start on our squash. Who else here is afraid I'm gonna chop off a finger? Same. Before I get to cutting this, our uh, sweet potatoes are definitely done, so I wanna drain those so we don't get too overdone. Then we'll come back to this guy. So I do wanna get to the sweet potatoes before they're like cold, but they're still steaming, they're good, because I like when I don't have to like melt the butter, like it'll just melt into the sweet potatoes themselves, so. After this, we're getting started on that. Taking a break from our roasted veggies and we're gonna go ahead and get our sweet potato casserole set up. I have two tablespoons of like a dairy-free butter, again, 
for my brother. You can use regular butter. It doesn't have to be dairy free. And then I'm doing one fourth cup of oat milk. You can use regular milk. You can use half and half. Cinnamon. Two tablespoons of brown sugar. Go ahead and give that a stir. I'm gonna do a little bit of salt. I tell you guys this every year. I'm more of a textural girl, a textural girl, so I like some texture. So I kind of like mash a little bit with my spoon and then just break some apart. Like I like it kind of like chunky with different textures. If you're not that type of person, you can go ahead and use the electric mixer and like really mash it up. But I like it better like this. I like it with some texture to it. All right, now we're just transferring it over here again so that we can be able to bring it to my mom's and then we'll make the topping as well. So before we get back to the maple roasted veggies, I wanna make our topping so we can check off the sweet potatoes from our list. So since we are making this ahead of time for tomorrow, we're gonna to keep the topping separately. I'm gonna put it in a bag put it on top of the dish so that I don't forget it, along with some marshmallows. I will have this recipe linked down below and I'll give you every single detail that you need to know. But first I'm starting with four tablespoons of dairy-free butter, doing one fourth cup of brown sugar, and then one fourth cup of flour. I'm gonna be using gluten-free flour. The gluten-free flour that I always use is King Arthur's and measure for measure. One fourth cup of gluten-free flour, salt, a half cup of pecans, don't come at me for how I say pecan. I'm from New Jersey, it's how I say pecan. I don't know if that's anything to do with me being from New Jersey. Somebody in my last Thanksgiving video got mad because she calls it pecans. Call it what you want. So how do you say the nut pecan? Okay, but which language do you want me to translate what? to? Pecan is the nut that is typically placed on top of sweet potato casserole. She just played me hard. So this is it. This is what's going in the bag. And then I'm also going to bring the marshmallows. So if you are going somewhere like I am and you're bringing this, you're making it ahead, you can go ahead and just mush it all together, put it in a bag, keep it in the fridge. When you get to where you're going and you're ready to serve it, so warm up just your sweet potatoes. I'm just going to warm that up. Once those are warm, I'm going to add this topping and then my marshmallows on top of this. So you'll see tomorrow when I record it gonna be straight up chaos. We have a two playoff games. Run home, get dressed, and run to my mama's house. And by running to my mama's house, I mean an hour drive. Okay, this is weird. I'm putting it on wax paper because I don't want it sticking like to the bag and like wasting ingredients. So I'll put wrap it in the wax paper, put it in the fridge, and then put this in the bag. And then I imagine it becomes more crumbly, but my butter was kind of like room temperature right now. See what I mean here I'm going for? I don't want to waste any, and I feel like if it's in this, I'll be able to just scrape it right off. This, I will make a checklist so I don't forget anything. The marshmallows, first I'm gonna let that finish cooling off. But this, I'll put in the fridge. All right, back to our vegetables. Let me clean this real quick. Luckily, we don't have any nut allergies in our family, otherwise I probably wouldn't even use this. We have a couple of friends that like, come over with their EpiPen, so I'm just, I don't know. I don't, I don't think I want to even want it around if one of my kids had allergies, like at Thanksgiving. I know it's a hard request, but obviously it's scary. Anyway. All right, I'm back. I can't think straight when there's a mess everywhere. Sorry. I know some of you guys can relate. I just can't even focus properly, but let's cut our squash and those are already done oh and then shallots we're going to put a shallot with this as well
just gonna add some oil and some salt, just get it ready for roasting. So your kids say roasted. My kids say that to me all the time. All right, I took a little break to tidy up and just like reset the kitchen basically. Mm -hmm. Alexa off, that's my, um, for the roasted vegetables. But I also put the green beans in for our green bean casserole. But right now, I'm just gonna make a glaze for our fall roasted veggies. So the recipe calls for um, two tablespoons of pure maple syrup, but I'm gonna use, I think three because I made a lot more veggies. And then we're just gonna cook this together with some walnuts for our topping. We'll move it to a plate to let cool, we'll let it all mix together. And then tomorrow at my mom's, we'll heat it up and add our cheese to the top. It's funny because my brother Walt is going and we would call him walnut. I'm going rogue here. Check on the veggies. I'm gonna cook now for the walnuts. It says to cook for two to four minutes. So okay. our veggies are done. I already transferred my green beans to one of these to-go containers just to make it easier for myself um, at my mom's house. Adding in this delicious looking walnut mixture of maple syrup, yum. Adding some craziness to this, my mouth is watering, it looks so good. I feel like I need to try just like one, but with the walnut. Still get really hot, it's like burning my hands. The goat cheese will make it even better, but. Mm, well done. All right, so this has like three minutes left. I'm gonna start making, getting the seasonings together. So it's pretty easy, just one teaspoon of everything. So a teaspoon of onion powder, a teaspoon of garlic powder, a teaspoon of paprika, and a teaspoon of mustard, and then a pinch of pepper flakes. So get that together. My babies are gonna be home any minute now, so the chaos is gonna start. Starting to make our cheese sauce now. We're starting with four tablespoons of butter. All right, so now that our butter is melted, I'm going to add in one fourth cup of gluten-free flour. You can use regular flour as well. Now we're gonna slowly add in five cups of milk. I'm gonna add in our seasonings now. Now we're gonna bring this to a boil for two minutes and add some sour cream. All right, it's been about two minutes. I'm adding in our sour cream. This is optional, but I feel like it would make it even creamier. If we're going all out for Thanksgiving, let's go all out. Kids are home if you can't hear. <laughs> all right, now we're adding in two cups of sharp cheddar. We reduce this to low, by the way. A cup of Colby Jack, a cup of Parmesan. Now we're just gonna stir this until it's all melty and delicious and pour it over our pasta. Super easy. Oh, 
don't have any clean forks right now, but I have to try this. I'm gonna make a topping for it too, which is gonna make it even better, but it's just it's too good not to try. Very good. I need more salt though. I'm gonna make a cracker topping and then add a bunch more cheese over top. And like, I would think the cheese would be salty, but I don't know, I feel like I need to just like mix in a little bit more salt. I don't know why I just said salt so weird. Salt. So decadent and delicious. Mm. Yeah, no. For the topping, we're just gonna do more of all the t types of cheese that we use. This is killing me. So sharp cheddar, Colby Jack, and Parmesan. And then hold on, my, my butter is exploding. Dog's away. So I was saying before my butter exploded and I stepped on a dog toy that you add sharp cheddar cheese and then Parmesan cheese and um, what was the other one? Me? Colby Jack. So basically you put your cheese topping first and then the um, crackers on top. <laughs> decadent, that's the word. Very, very decadent. All right, so that, let's use the rest of this. All right, so now I have, again, decadent, six tablespoons of butter and one and a half cup of gluten-free crackers. Do you want one before you want? This is a topping for the mac and cheese. Are you gonna make like that stuff with the marshmallows in it? Mm-hmm. I like that. Sweet potato casserole? All right, now I'm gonna add the topping. I'm running out of space here. Gosh, this smells and looks amazing. Yeah, I'm sad that I have to bring this to my mom's house because I'm so scared that I'm gonna forget it. The caraway actual like pan right now because I ran out of the other ones. I had green beans in there. Smell it. It did. It smells good, right? It's gonna be baked mac and cheese. Oh my gosh. This was Chris's request and it was a great request. Once it's all baked, it's gonna be Amazing. Yeah, they're right up there. All right, let's get on to the green beans so we can be done with that type of stuff and be on to the fun part, dessert. Evie is really into singing right now. So we're using a can of cream of mushroom. One fourth cup of milk. This is a teaspoon of Worcestershire and a teaspoon of soy sauce. Dash of hot sauce. I'm gonna add a cup of cheddar cheese. Then a cup of gluten-free crispy fried onion. All right, so you'll see the official finished product tomorrow at my mom's house, but this is what I do to keep myself sane. Everyone's, I'm like running around with the kids and changing diapers and all of that. And then they'll be like, how long does this go in and what temp or, you know, whoever's in the kitchen. So I just like to write on these. <laughs> it says rye green beans plain. You can't really see it for my brother. There's no um, dairy on it. Mac and cheese. Sweet potato, I'm gonna put this in the fridge. Just want to put it together. Um, cranberry sauce, and I did add pecans already, so yeah, cross that out. Another tip I have, because if I know like I'm going to my mom's house, I'll try to save a recycling, like a Amazon box or something big enough to keep everything nice and sturdy. Then I'll put the stuff that's not cold in a bag. So just got Evie to bed. Probably 
say I tend to be using food processor. So I'm starting out with an Oreo crust, which is not the traditional peanut butter pie crust. It, the one that I have, it calls for gluten-free chocolate chip cookies, but we're using these. For our filling, we're going to do some cream cheese. I did a little bit more than they said. Um, a cup of peanut butter, creamy peanut butter. Doing a cup of powdered sugar, one and a half teaspoons of vanilla extract. Mix this up. While that's going, hopefully you can hear me, I'm gonna um, whip up one and a half cups of heavy whipping cream. All right, I'm embarrassed to say that was my first time making whipped cream and it was pretty dang easy. It would have been even easier if I made it with this, but, you know, with the sand mixer. All right, so now we're going to add in some of our whipped cream. Stir it on medium in here. And then we're going to hand mix the rest in after this is combined. Now we're just going to add in the rest, but we're going to stir it by hand. And then add in our mixtures. I'm adding Reese's and some chocolate chips. This is very, very decadent, so you don't want to like cut a huge slice, definitely like a tiny slice type of dessert. All right, so Chris is making those drumsticks. I feel like I talked to you about it, but that feels like 10 years ago. 
So the kids always fight over the legs on the turkey or the chickens. We're like, let's just grab some. It's Chris's idea. It's an amazing idea. I have no idea what he's doing. He's Operation Chicken Leg. Just doing what you can't do. Touching nasty raw chicken leg. <laughs> so what so are you dipping it in? Just a little egg, egg and milk, whatever, wash. And then this is gluten-free flour with a bunch of different stuff. Uh, onion powder, garlic powder, uh, cayenne. Um, Sounds good. The Adobo. Adobo. Sounds good. Salt, pepper. And then he's going to make some um, with a different egg wash with oat milk in it for my brother. But we'll set his aside. Love that chicken and pot pie. <laughs> so here's some cooked ones so far. Not good. Good, like you would eat it? Never. I don't eat meat on the bone. It's just not my jam. So I have two cups of gluten-free flour here and I'm doing two sticks of the dairy-free butter. I'm gonna cut them up into little cubes. I had to wait a really long time for this um, and it's super late at night because I let them sit out. I should have kept them in the fridge because you need them to be cold to be able to make your crust. So don't do what I did. Learn from my mistakes because now it's like 11.30 at night and I'm still making pie. All right, now that our pie crust is finally together, again, I have no idea how it's gonna come out because I've never used this dairy-free butter before. So, one fourth cup of flour is sprinkling into the bottom. And one fourth cup of coconut sugar. Then I'm gonna top this with cinnamon and sugar, but we have a cinnamon sugar shaker so that our kids like to put on their toes sometimes.
Uh, dear Lord, thank you for this wonderful day, the food in front of us, and this good, wonderful family who we all owe to my wonderful wife, Kathy. Yes, sister. <laughs> Props to my lord and my wife. Thank you. Uh, thank you for keeping us safe in these troubling times. And let's uh, give praise to my Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you for having us. Thank you. So much. My girls, for all the cooking and work you did. You're welcome. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. My girls are going to do the same for me one day. Okay. Okay. Hi. Hello, Douglas. Hi.